Good morning. We have a quorum, and it's the appointed time. I call the meeting to order. Let's invite、uh, the administration and deputations to join us. There are altogether 171 deputations and individuals coming to make their submissions. There will be four sessions in today's meeting, with each session lasting about two hours. We have a very tight schedule, so we do need your full cooperation. Quorum is very important, so I ask you all to persevere, so that we can listen to all the views expressed by the public. Please be seated so that we can start as soon as possible. The purpose of this meeting is a public hearing to hear submissions from individuals and deputations on the, the Copyright Amendment Bill 2014. Once again, I thank you all for coming. Please put on your earpiece and select. Your channel. Channel zero is the floor. Channel one is Cantonese. Channel two, English. Channel three, Putonghua. First of all, I would like to remind you all that apart from、uh, government officials and、uh, legislators, what you say is not covered by the.、Uh, Leg Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance, and I'd like to draw your attention that、uh, when you attend meetings inside the conference room, or if you are in the public gallery, you will find notice listing out all the、um, important points to note. You have already received a notice, and it is also. Table in front of you. Those in the public gallery may ask from our security staff the notice. There will be four sessions today, receiving 171 deputations and individuals. The first session will last from nine o'clock to eleven in the morning. Then we will have a break for ten minutes. I will ask. Deputations and individuals to speak one by one. You have two and a half meeting,、uh, two and a half minutes.
You only have to set out the salient points in your submission. There is no need to repeat everything in the submission that you have already given to us. It's our usual practice to upload the submissions you have given to us onto the LegCo website. Please do not use cocktail language to facilitate interpretation. I will now first invite Mr. Lee to speak. Mr. Derek Lee. Good morning, everyone. I am a representative of the Hong Kong and International Publishers Alliance. Well, uh, since 2002, there are um, a number of uh, publishers forming this alliance, including those in Hong Kong, UK, US, and one uh, related to one international publisher. We support the reform and modernization of the copyright regime to encourage continuous and capital input into the uh, system so that in the end it will benefit everyone. A reform and strengthened copyright regime is the basis of the system. This will uh, further protect the economic um, rights of copyright owners Back in 2011, we gave our submission, and this one, the 2014 one, is based on the 2011 bill. Modernization of the laws of Hong Kong is to facilitate the operation of today's um, uh, technology and information market. It's been about eight years since the first uh, consultation. The 2014 bills include a number of important reforms. We hope that, well, we have made our submission on the 17th of October 2014. We hope that the 2014 bill will be formulated and uh, endorsed as soon as possible. Thank you. Next is uh, Ms. Dillis Yu. Thank you. We were set up in 1995. We're also uh, a member of uh, the International Reprographic Rights Licensing Society. We fully <coughs> agree with the submissions of on the 17th of October 2014 of um, the Hong Kong and International Publishers Alliance. We, th we think that modernization will take into account Hong Kong's changing environment. It's been eight years since the first consultation. We hope that this will soon become the law so that uh, the economic rights of copyright owners can be effectively protected. Next is uh, Mr. Ricky Fong. Thank you. I represent IFPI Hong Kong Limited. In the digital environment, Hong Kong's uh, copyright law lags behind other jurisdictions by about 10 years. Our, um, um, uh, our re record, uh, indus recording industry is shrinking by the, uh, by the day. The copyright legislation is to protect the rights of copyright owners. With the spoofs, um, they think that uh, with the um, amendment of the law, their rights will be infringed and um, undermined. But ex experts have done some research, and they say that uh, the um, amendment will not have a negative impact on spoofs. And we hope that, that there will be some clarifications and exceptions of uh, parodies. The uh, copyright industry has been tolerant. We just ask these people not to use uh, not to reuse the material for or for economic benefit. We, we endeavor to get a fair deal. 
the amendment is not accidental. It follows the international trend, and there has been many discussions between the administration and the sector. In other countries, uh, there has been setting up of a safe uh, harbor. There is no uh, suppression of freedom of speech. There is still for improvement in relation to this bill. At least, this is a step forward. So we support this amendment bill. The well, further amendments can be introduced in the next round. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chao Kuang. Thank you. I speak for TVB. Copyright infringement on the internet causes a um, harm that is well known. Our business has suffered huge loss as a result. If the law is not reformed to curb such activities, TVB and other creative industries will find it more and more difficult to operate. The worst case in the scenario is, uh, in, is an increase in unemployment rate. This will not benefit Hong Kong, so we urge the administration and the LegCo to um, legislate for this bill. There are three types of infringement. There has been more and more internet websites that infringes on copyrighted materials. They provide a viewing of um, television programs. Most of these uh, inter internet websites are outside Hong Kong, but you can access them in Hong Kong. And there are some TV t uh, set-top boxes. They have already been uh, set to link to these infringement websites. For others, it will uh, be very easy to simply install these um, to to link them to infringement websites. In Upliu Street, there are uh, lots of such shops. A lot of these shops, when selling set-top boxes or smartphones, they will free of charge install apps that have access uh, to uh, these infringement uh, sites. And some of them will give you free of charge tens of thousands of TV shows. All these uh, apps are free for download. You can use it on your tablet, uh, set top boxes, smart TV, smartphones with ease. So I think um, the uh, number of these uh, apps is uh, increasing exponentially. There is one that provides 468 uh, different apps. Most of them can view copyrighted materials. So you can imagine that uh, internet infringement is very serious. We agree that the 2014 Amendment Bill will help in curbing uh, internet infringement, but there is still for room for improvement. Sorry, Mr. Chow, your time is up. Next is Mr. John Medeiros. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. CASBOP is the Asian Association of the Pay TV Industry. We are headquartered in Hong Kong, and the presence of our industry and our member companies here helps maintain Hong Kong's role as an international media hub. We urge the legislature in the strongest possible terms to pass the Copyright Amendment Bill as quickly as possible. And we urge the Hong Kong government to turn immediately to the vital task of considering what next steps are needed to create real protection for copyrighted works in Hong Kong. In an age of ongoing technological revolution, standing still is not an option. The 10 years of delay in formulating and passing legislation to even start the process of bringing Hong Kong's copyright legislation into the digital era have demonstrated that. Not moving forward, while the multinational piracy syndicates find new ways around the law means that civil legal society goes backward. In the television industry, unauthorized online distribution of TV programming has grown massively even in the last five years using new technological means. Mr. Chow just referred to some. 
And now there are forms of piracy not caught by existing copyright legislation which are leading to job destruction in the legitimate content creation, syndication, and distribution sectors. I cannot say this clearly enough. While the various branches of government dither and discuss, Hong Kong is losing out because of inadequate copyright protection in the digital era. As a regional hub, Hong Kong loses economic benefits when the growth of the TV industry is impaired and the industry shrinks. And as content creators in their own right, Hong Kong's authors, directors, actors, and technicians all suffer huge losses from unauthorized distribution of their work. Our side of the creative industry is shrinking and not growing, and it's because of piracy. And the government should take cognizance of that fact. Mr. Chairman, the work of this committee is vital, and I thank you for your attention and urge you to proceed as quickly as possible to finalize this legislation. Doje. Thank you. Uh, Wang Weixing, please. Huh? Mr. Wang Weixing, thank you. I represent the New People's Party. Uh, nowadays, when it comes to dissemination of information, uh, the mode changes by the minute. However, the existing transmission mode covered by the law does not catch up with the changing um, technological the transmission uh, method and we think that the administration should take responsibility so the local copyright uh, legislation should be updated as soon as possible we should uh, shoulder our international responsibility so that uh, Hong Kong can uh, weather all the different storms brought by infringement complete exemption of parody is not feasible because this detaches from international uh, practice and is in breach of international convention um, this bill take uh, adopts a uh, usual practice and uh, will judge by the nature of the um, parody to decide whether it is infringement we think that it is more f it is fairer and it will um, provide better protection for copyrighted uh, co for copyright materials and hold and copyright owners, and we think that in relation to the definition of parody, um, views of scholars should be sought, and they should consider engaging overseas experts to conduct an objective research to ensure that the copyright regime is in line with international practice. The government should also encourage. Um, <coughs> copyrighted uh, owners and a uh, lot of users to use the uh, Creative Commons uh, license and to improve the copyright owners um, licensing to promote interaction and the government uh, should mount a large-scale publicity campaign to teach the public to um, protect IPRs well, the administration has been working on promoting Hong Kong and cre developing Hong Kong as a creative hub, but this is heavily related to copyright uh, and IPRs. We hope that um, the uh, law should be modernized as soon as possible to protect the rights of, co of uh, IPR owners and also to protect the rights um, to creative work. Mr. Tom Coxon. Mr. Tom Coxon. First of all, I'd like to respond to Mr. Chao Kong Sang. TVB has not been able to make a profit because of the poor quality of its programs. TVB news is simply, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, you know, unsatisfactory. Perhaps if you dismiss them, since why your results would improve. Regarding the bill, I think it should be withdrawn. There are three reasons for that. First of all, the public. I think the trust between the public and the government has already collapsed. For such a controversial issue, I don't think we should discuss this any further. Secondly, the standard of councillors. On the 6th and 7th of October, the central secondary schools in, and primary schools have resumed classes uh, or from the 6th and 7th of October. On the 8th of October, our honourable members, like our kindergarten kids, were not able to, uh, you know, form a quorum for a meeting. So are we telling the public that this is 
the standard of uh, uh, counselors are only the same as those of kindergarten kids. Of course, the president has always uh, commented that the standard of legislative counselors only belong to the standard of primary school children. Thirdly, Hong Kong has now entered an absurd era. Our police forces can be bought, perhaps later. Mr. James Jean is very smart. He has donated three hundred thousand dollars to the force. He may not have to make the donation, but would it be the case that in future, when the police uh, see Mr. Teen, you know, <clears throat> jumping the red lights, crossing the double, uh, you know, two uh, red uh, white lines, uh, they will not prosecute and turn a blind eye to that. Would that be possible? And also, another company is going to donate one million dollars to the force. Uh, perhaps uh, that could be, you know, exchange for exemption from investigation by the Commercial Crime Bureau. Recently, we saw a police officer slam. Your time is up. Next, Mr. Cheng Pan Pan. I think the chairman is being most unfair, Mr. Cheng Pan Pan. Thank you. I represent the Internet Society Hong Kong. Our position represents all the users of the of the internet. Regarding the 2014 uh, Copyright Amendment Bill, we have the following submissions. First of all, we agree that we need to protect the rights of copyright holders, so any form of commercial piracy should be punished severely. Our society in 2011, when the when the government put forward the, pro the safe harbor proposal, we really support. We are glad that this proposal is included in the present bill. However, we believe that the most crucial point is that for parody, which doesn't infringe the rights of the copyright owners, and the author has not received any commercial benefits, such parody works uh, and the distributor should be exempted from civil and criminal liabilities so that we can encourage creativity in Hong Kong. We would also like to emphasize that an exemption for parody uh, its authors and distributors should be clear uh, and easily understood so that pe so there will not be any panic arising from misunderstanding and the creative industries would be affected as a result. We therefore agree with the proposed fair dealing provisions. We also hope that LegCo can further consider adding uh, the uh, the uh, proposed exemption for uh, you know uh, derivative works, and that anyone making distribution in the personal capacities and without any commercial interest should be also exempted. We see note that the present amendment stipulates the economic uh, prejudice and original works as the, uh, uh, the 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 basic consideration for the court in in deciding on criminal criminal. Sanctions. We propose that we should also add the criteria whether or not the work is an individual creation or whether or not it's a commercial, uh, you know, uh, creation, and that the court can take another consider another factor. That is whether or not the distributor has repeatedly, you know, distributed parody works which have not infringed on any rights. Uh, in summary. The Copyright Bill not only needs to protect the rights of copyright owners, we should also expand the, the, the scope for the, uh, the creation of parody and also minimize the legal risk for those involved in such creative works. Mr. Ao Nok Kin, thank you. Uh, today I'd like to focus on the safe harbor provision. The concept of the safe harbor is to protect the rights of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, content providers, but the but regarding certain copyright works and secondary creation, it may, it may not afford sufficient protection. Section C and D of the bill said that once you uh, of, of receiving you know uh, you know an objection notice, uh, 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 then the secondary creation should be uh, abolished, and also uh, uh, sufficient information should be used to back up the uh, back up the notice, and the uh, work being complained. Uh, gains will need to be removed from the market. 
would we would you consider this? That is, when the original author has stipulated the source of his works and has provided such information, then his work would not need to be taken off the shelf immediately. In paragraph 11 of your paper, you say that the safe harbor provision could be <coughs> provided for in terms of a subsidiary legislation rather than through a code of practice. If we offer a code of practice, legislators may not know how we can use such codes to monitor the, 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 the situation. So under the circumstances, uh, adopting such, we can therefore tackle the problem but by such an approach. For example, the government has produced many APIs. Can we say that we're not satisfied? Can we, and then we can lodge a complaint, and then the government have to remove all these APIs, urging people to accept the proposal for the 2017 C election. Mr. Chinkam Lam may not agree because he once had said, uh, asked, why do you need to <clears throat> you know, use other people's work? Why don't you create your own works? Well, in that case, can I prosecute uh, you know, uh, the Democratic uh, uh, DAP uh, councillors for copying uh, uh, other travel agencies' itineraries. Uh, uh, that is only, of course, uh, uh, an analogy. When we engage in sector creation, when we distribute such works, the safe harbour should not be an instrument to incriminate. I hope that through the, I hope you would, uh, councillors would consider our suggestion so that both copyright owners and those involved in secondary creation will have the rights being protected. Next, Mr. Kennedy, Ms. Kennedy. And, and thank you, uh, Bill's committee members, for taking time on a Saturday uh, to listen to us. American Chamber of Ch uh, Commerce is strongly supportive of the introduction of the uh, copyright bill and passing of this uh, bill uh, immediately. We were supportive of the uh, copyright amendment bill in 2000. 11. I cannot emphasize how uh, timely the introduction of the bill is. Creative industries in Hong Kong have suffered tremendously, as you have heard from previous speakers, while this debate about the copyright uh, reform has been languishing and, languishing and continuing for nearly a decade. The high standards of intellectual property rights protection are needed not only to protect, foster and enhance the competitiveness of Hong Kong's creative and innovation industries, but also to develop key economic opportunities for Hong Kong's knowledge-based economies. In short, we would like to see the bill passed as soon as possible. Time is of the essence. We would like the um, committee uh, to reconsider the proposed sections 1182AA and 1188C, which deal with non-exhaustive non factors for uh, court consideration when uh, a criminal uh, prosecution uh, is brought. We note that the non-exhaustive uh, factors uh, proposed in the 2011 bill were sufficient. There's been a substantive narrowing uh, of um, uh, the fact to be considered. Uh, we note that the Bills Committee requested uh, a discussion of um, precedents uh, in, in relation to copyright infringement, and we note that, in, in, in fact, the same cases that were uh, considered uh, in 2011 are put forward uh, again in a paper that has been submitted to this committee, but the conclusion seems to be different. So we wonder why that is the case. We would urge you to look again uh, at these factors and um, perhaps allow the non-exhaustive non factors that we had in the 2011 paper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, uh, Chairman and uh, Bill Committee members. Um, I represent the Federation of uh, Hong Kong Filmmakers. I don't know if Mr. Bradley Mark John is in the chamber. I want to read a quote that uh, he wrote um, on the forum about the um, copyright ordinance. So uh, Mr. Mark, uh, Bradley Mark Johnson wrote on July the 24th, he said, I believe the current copyright ordinance along with the draft copy of Code of Practice for Service Providers are sufficient enough to strike a balance between allowing for um, Deriv derivative creation of which parody is one of its many forms and the protection of copyright owners' interests so it is not necessary to do any changes. So as Mr. Bradley has suggested, in any reform 
if any reform should be made, it should be made with the consideration of not limiting but exempting this derivative creation. One important thing to consider is whether this new creation have enough significant difference to create point of departure from the original, either in context, in syntax, or in form, so that, so that, the, so that essentially they become new creation in their own rights, and these new creations are not competing in the same arena or on the same scale as the original, and that they do not cause significant economic damages to the original copyright owners. I think we should consider um, the U.S. Um, um, point of view on fair use. For example, when you look at a piece of work, you, you should not look at what is different, what is similar, but you should look at what is different. So the point of departure is very important here. Also, you should consider whether it's used for commercial or non-profit uh, reasons and whether it has financial loss or impact to the original creators. Those are the things that you should consider. So um, in, in closing, I think this creation are usually not with the purpose or the means to do adversely economic impact on the copyright owners. But in many cases, they tend to be strengths, strengths of creation, some of greater and some of less point of departure reflecting on our history and our culture. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Kan Chi Chong Xin Sang. Kan Chi Chong. Chairman, in the 18th century, a German, a German poet once said that uh, you're not one is not as diligent as a bee, and one is not. If you're talking about agility, you're like a worm. And regarding uh, you know intelligence, you are worse than the primates. However, arts and human beings actually have a coexistent relationship. We know how to make. Artistic creations, works of arts are people for, are for people to appreciate. Our traditional mindset will think that uh, a piece of art, uh, once it's being created and being appreciated, the mission is finished. But contemporary artists are now telling us that you know artistic creation is not the privilege of artists. Anyone can be artist. Anyone can create works of art. Anyone can through his own feelings, yeah, further you know enhance sort of existing works so that existing works will be given new vitality. It will also extend the influence of that piece of work. Uh, furthermore. Uh, the mindset of different ages could be incorporated into uh, a piece of work, and that piece of work could become uh, even a greater piece, a greater masterpiece. And second creation is exactly like that. Anybody can be involved in creation at any time. In a free environment where there is no constraint, people's creativity can be set free. For example, recently some members of the public are not satisfied with the decision of the MPCSC regarding political reform, so they launched the umbrella movement and civil disobedience. Uh, one of the creation is the, the war. Uh, on which people put, uh, you know, colors, uh, uh, papers in different colors, and put down uh, their thoughts, and and put it on the wall uh, outside uh, the government office, and uh, you know, public opinion being expressed in in, in different color, uh, being put up, and the government has not seen it. In the 1980s in Prague, people started to. Uh, write graffiti on the walls, and it became uh, a way to, for people to vent frustration against the Czech government. It has also become a symbol. The Lenin War in Hong Kong has meant that this culture has been, uh, you know, transmitted from Eastern Europe to Hong Kong. And when people in other world learned about what is happening in Hong Kong, they are also putting up these uh, messages on their Lenin War in Eastern Europe. I therefore do not agree with any restriction on artistic creation, especially secondary creation. The Liberal Party, uh, Mr. Xiu, we agree with the proposed 2014 uh, Copyright Amendment Bill, but I'd like to uh, focus on how we could pr provide exemption for second creation and that the rights of copyright owners will not be infringed upon. At the public consultation last year, we already expressed our position to the government and we said that we need to strike a balance between the two. After the consultation, uh, the government has now proposed to add the fair dealing provision in the bill, so the parody, satire, car caricature, and commenting on current affairs could be exempted. So any piece for any piece of work, if exempted, uh, would protect the right for uh, uh, 
uh, creation, and we agree. But I also like to remind members that such secondary creation very often, for example, make use of TV ads, <clears throat> you know, drama, uh, or, uh, songs, and so on. So if the the criteria are not clearly defined, they could easily infringe on the rights of other people, and that would be have an adverse impact on the business environment in Hong Kong. The government therefore need to clearly define uh, the standard for exemptions and should not make any relax relaxations easily. Also, for uh, derivative content and how may an individual be uh, liable. Uh, uh, in this regard, we would like to highlight that if the government uh, does not adopt any uh, specific measures, then it would also have an impact on on those in, involved in the infringing activities. Mr. Patricia. Fox. From Star TV to Fox International Channels, 21st Century Fox has maintained its Asian pay TV headquarters in Hong Kong for over two decades, and we are very proud of our long-standing presence here in Hong Kong. Dealing with online content theft can be approached in a number of ways. We strongly believe successful passage of this bill is a good first step. Passing the bill will also demonstrate Hong Kong's renewed commitment to intellectual property rights in the creative industries and better position Hong Kong as a market that empowers the creative industries and incentivizes them to continue to innovate, develop, and produce high quality content. Thank you for the opportunity to express our views here today. And again, we strongly urge the passage of the bill to, mod to modernize Hong Kong's copyright laws. Thank you. Hi, Wei Lam Kake, Lucy. Ms. Lam Kake. IFPI, the International Federation of the Photographic Industry. IFPI represents the recording industry worldwide. In general, the Copyright Amendment Bill is an important step towards aligning the copyright laws of Hong Kong with the technological advancements. The amendments are long overdue. Timely adoption of the bill is crucial to the development of the creative industry. The current copyright law in Hong Kong does not provide adequate protection for online content. As a result, some unlawful online services offering music in breach of the making available right could evade any sanctions. The bill now introduces a technology-neutral communication right to enhance copyright protection, which could help with the piracy problem to a certain extent. However, the proposed Section 28A subsection 5 is problematic, as it could be interpreted to effectively make all acts of retransmission of content non-infringing and so it could potentially violate Hong Kong's obligations under certain international treaties. I will not go into the details of this issue here, but I invite the honorable legislators to refer to our written submissions. Now, regarding the introduction of the parody and quotation exceptions, we fully support creativity and freedom of expression, including secondary creations, as long as they fall within the clearly defined legal exceptions, which comply with the three-step test. We believe that the existing and the proposed exceptions are already sufficient, so we support the government's decision not to include an exception for UGC in the bill. As the former Assistant Direct Director General of WIPO, Dr. Mihaly Fikshoff, pointed out, um, the UGC exception would not meet the three-step test, and he also pointed out that it would be undesirable if the new exception may result in the weakening of the incentive to create and invest in the primary uh, copyright content. And in fact, licensing mechanisms are already in place to facilitate UGC creation. So there is no need for the introduction of a specific UGC exception which would undermine such commercial activities. The corporate law of Hong Kong is lagging far behind uh, those of other territories. It is therefore very important that the bill be adopted without any further delay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Peter Lam. Good morning. I speak on behalf of the Hong Kong Copyrights Alliance. As for our 
alliance. Well, we formed specifically for this consultation. We comprise 16 organizations, and we have regular meetings. We have over 1,400 corporate members. So we have looked at different aspects of copyright. We have a very rich experience in this area. No matter whether it's operation or legislation in different countries, we have collected a lot of views. We think that we have we are already at a very important moment. We need to pass the copyright amendment bill as soon as possible. Just now, many speakers have already spoken. They have uh, been they have spoken on behalf of different organizations. Some of them are our alliance members. They state that the existing copyright ordinance is lagging behind the time by 10 years. We have entered the digital environment for a long time, but when it comes to regulations and advancements of technology, etc., we are really lagging behind and we need a lot of amendments. Just now, TV representatives have talked about top sets top box have talked about streaming, etc. These are things that we have to look into in the future. However, there are areas that are still not covered by the bill, yet the bill has to be passed as soon as possible. In the future, I hope that there will be more discussions among the industry members and different creators so that more opportunities can be created. We are very uh, grateful to the uh, government for organizing public forums and closed door meetings for um, sticker, uh, stakeholders of the industry. And Mr. Charles Mark has also set up platforms for our communications. I hope that in the future we can have more dialogues so that we will know how the copyright ordinance can be optimized. As for UGC, I hope that through such discussions there will be more commercial opportunities regarding UGC. Next, Mr. Chen Chen Kit. Thank you, Chairman. Well, we have been talking about the amendments um, of the bill. I'm not going to detail the details of this because I think you're more familiar with them. Let me talk about culture. Well, if you want culture other um, than a good place, you need talents. But in Hong Kong, we have both. For example, there are a lot of um, students studying arts and culture in Hong Kong. And we have universities and institutions providing this kind of education to them. Many of our talents also go overseas for exhibitions, etc. How come Hong Kong is still being criticized as a culturalist place? Uh, does culture mean education? If I have a good education, if I am trilingual, then I am cultured? No, I don't think so. And in the secondary school, we always stress um, that we should have uh, Brainstorming. We should have a general education. I, if I get something from brainstorming, it's just something very short-lived. Such short-lived thoughts can be turned into products. But now there is this copyright. Problem that my creativity is undermined. Now I understand why Hong Kong is called a cultural desert. Next, Mr. Chow Ho Ting. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning. The DAB supports the protection of copyrights and the encouragement of. Uh, creativity and a balance should be struck between the two. Now, under the present copyright regime, and now a consultation is being conducted on parody. And earlier on, we have said that option three would be the more, more appropriate one. That is, under special circumstances, parody um, should be exempted from civil and criminal liability. Now, the government is adopting th this third option, and we agree to that in principle. We also agree to. Um, the safe harbor provision. This can encourage 
OSP to take reasonable action when there's um, infringements of copyrights online. And also, OSP um, can be helped when um, there are uh, legal uh, consequences. We hope that the new copyright coordinates can be clear and straightforward so that it won't accidentally catch innocent people. And also, people should be given more education concerning the copyright regime. I hope that we can continue to uh, promote people's awareness of intellectual property so that people won't be caught accidentally by the law. Next, Mr. Hagen So How Long. If you are determined, we can all be united. Even in adversity, we can move forward. Now, this was sung by uh, Mr. Tommy Chung at a council meeting. He did this to encourage um, the police. But this is also secondary um, creation. And he, may, he might not have um, gotten the approval of the original uh, composer. So is this a parody, satire, caricature, or pastiche, or this commenting on current events? Actually, I am commenting on current events. I have just sung a few phrases. If I sing more, then I may be caught by the law. You don't know what I mean. Now, if I sing it to encourage the police, then when I look at parody, satire, etc., there is nothing called encouragement. So if I sing it to encourage the police, should the law be amended again? And for the creators, if they have to go through all these procedures, then they cannot focus on their creation. Now people are trying to fight for secondary creation exemptions. They are not. Um, Naughty netizens. They are trying to fight for um, the freedom of expression. Now, you can support the police. Other people don't support the police, but we all have our freedom of expression. So we can all enjoy freedom. So how can second secondary creation be incorporated into the law? In Canada, they have adopted the UGC system for a year. I object to uh, copyright infringing. I do not have Xiaomi uh, box at home. When I like a song, I'll go online to pay and buy it. In Canada, they have adopted this regime for a year. and. UGC has not been abused. A Vimeo is another uh, video sent video uh, website like YouTube. Next, Mr. Tong Nishi. Good morning. Uh, we have provided our submission to the Legislative Council and our organization has joined hands with the Hong Kong Copyright Alliance to make our voice heard about this bill. With regard to parody, we have looked at overseas practices and we have also um, looked at um, our a distributor's problems in Hong Kong. Earlier on, there was a, a very uh, popular movie in Hong Kong, and some of the uh, scenes were captured for parody. The copyright owner consulted our association. Well, in the distribution, well, they have signed a distribution. A contract with a Hong Kong distribu uh, distributor. For any information um, concerning the firm and for any posters, etc., if they are to be changed or revised, uh, the copyright owner would have to be consulted. However, the distributor has not altered any of the photos or um, videos, but the photos, but the captured photo. 
has already been uploaded onto the internet and disseminated. The copyright owner asked our association whether it um, has the right to uh, pursue the issue in accordance with the contract. Now we did a uh, neutral lobbying. We say that now the Hong Kong law does not cover it now, but you can take civil action. Now, if you sue the distributor, actually, it's not his fault. He's also a victim of the whole regime. Now, if the copy of the copyright owner sues the Hong Kong distributor, then the copyright owner faces a lot of problems. Yes, it involves um, civil actions, and if you uh, and if you lose, there may be criminal um, actions. I'm sorry, this is what I uh, want to share with you. Next, Ms. Kwang Chong Cheng. It's a standalone civil and criminal exemption, which requires the derivative work itself to be non-profit making, not in the course of business, not substituting the original work, and do not cause financial impact on market and exploitation. This exemption will catch all forms of creations, which parody, satire, caricature, a pastiche, or even works for commenting on current affairs may not include. This can also protect the legitimate interest of the copyright owner, as it requires the work to be non-profit making and not in the course of business. Not only can the UGC exemption protect and encourages the creative industry, but it can also strike a balance in safeguarding the legitimate rights of the copyright owner. Though so, some may say that it only exists in Canada, and this UGC exemption may not confirm to the three-step test and will thus violate the Burns Convention, which is, which is an international obligation the government must obey. Be that as it may, this proposal of UGC imposes stricter requirements than the fair use doctrine adopted by the U.S., which uh, this exemption confirms to the three-step test, thus so will UGC. Nonetheless, no one or no one single country had filed any complaint to WTO saying that the Canadian UGC exemption violates the Berne Convention. Therefore, this concern must not stand. For the intermediary exemption under the proposed UGC exemption, it is our submission that opposing an individual to authorize the intermediary to use, decimate, or communicate the UGC contents is equal to opposing the right of freedom of expression and freedom of communications of the citizens. Because without a proper platform, the creation will not be able to be delivered to the public. It is true that the parody, caricature, satire, pastiche, and commenting on, current of, commenting on current affairs exemption can cover various types of derivative works. However, UGC can cover more and most of them on the internet, ranging from Photoshop photos to streaming. Therefore, it is groundless for the government to not accept to not to accept the user-generated content exemption, and it will not harm the legitimate interests of copyright owner. Thus, can advocate the creative industry in Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Ms. Ok May Paul. Thank you, Chairman. I speak on behalf of the Amnesty International Hong Kong. Amnesty International has three million members in the world as a human rights organization. Our proposal is as follows. As for the secondary creation, it involves a lot of human rights. Uh, it is about um, expression of freedom, about um, information freedom, so it is protected by the um, International Covenant on, on Civil and Political Rights. Also, it is a creation freedom. It involves uh, public uh, participation and people's freedom um, to culture. So it's also covered by the International Covenant on um, Social and Economic Lives. In 2013, we have already uh, provided a submission to the Legislative Council. Now in this um, Copyright Amendment Bill 2014, Something is added that is fair, fair dealing exemptions. Parody, satire, caricature, and pastiche. Commenting on current affairs and quotation uh, uh, will be accepted. This is a new uh, proposed 
provision, and we welcome it. However, we have a major concern. Although there is an exemption, there may not be、uh, sufficient protection. For example, other ways of expressions. For example, if it's not parody, if it's not commenting on on current event events, if、um, you are just writing new lyrics for a song, or if it's Tong Jin Ji, then these are not protected. We think that the、um, definitions should be broader, so that creations can be、uh, protected. Some transformative content should also be protected. For example, non-commercial use,、um, user-generated content, or all these should be protected because they are freedoms, and people should、um, be given the freedom to enjoy cultural life. As for the safe harbor provision, when we looked at The United Nations Relevance Report. They have criticized that the notice and takedown mechanism can easily be abused by a country. So, in our submission, we have already said something about this. Next, Miss、um, Eugenia Lau. The government says the government has used the words、um, secondary creations. But it's still very、uh, difficult to know the、um, area of copyright infringement. The government is not doing a, a right job about this. Fact, secondary creation has a very clear definition in the academic field. It is、uh, very different from copying. The government. Present present proposal is a far cry from the international standards. Now, if you say that、um, if you reach certain standards, then you will be exempted. Then let us look at the Canada's UGC practice. Well, for the secondary、um, creation people, it's very difficult for them to see a clear picture as to whether they would infringe the law. So. I think that the Tong Jin Shi、uh, practice should be incorporated, so that Tong Jin Shi can be better protected. And if only a minor economic element is involved,、um, all the parodies should not be、um, undermined. Well, some the、um, new provisions should be clearer, so that people won't be caught by the law easily. Thank you. Next, Mr. Allen Lai. I would like to sing first. Into Yichang, Zhou Tong Tong Do Feng Shat, Mang Lo Ya Sam Guan Tao, Chong Lai Li Do Mai Wan Geng, Yao Yuan Do Gan Zhuo Zhe Ping Tai Sa Ching Do Mo Da Zhou, Wei Yu Ji Si. 步到大家，以创作者免受问责，认责。为 U G C 免受问责，认责。好啦。Well, for the song I sang just now, maybe you are familiar with it because it's the Canadian national anthem. As oh, Canada,、um, its copyright has expired, so、um, it does not need any exemption, and I can alter it any way I like. Well, of course, it's not a very good altered song. And just now, you heard Mr. Solar Pang. Well, the content I sang just now may not. Satisfy the、um, government's requirement that it is it may not fall under the categories of parody, satire, caricature, pastiche, or commenting on 
current events. So we need a broader regime so that the interests of both parties can be uh, met or satisfied. Now, we don't want the um, copyright owners to be prejudiced economically, but we also want to encourage creativity. So I um, support the UGC regime. Next, Miss Hui, Miss Ko Pu Hun. Warner Brothers is a global entertainment company with business ranging from feature films to television, home entertainment, along with product and brand licensing and interactive entertainment. Films released or to be released in Hong Kong by Warner Brothers in 2014 includes The Lego Movie, Godzilla, Edge of Tomorrow, Annabelle and The Hobbit. Warner Brothers Asia Pacific Regional Headquarters is based in Hong Kong and Warner Brothers has a vested interest in the protections afforded by Hong Kong's copyright rights. Warner Brothers film and TV contents are made available on a variety of digital platforms and the rampant growth of online piracy poses a significant challenge to Warner Brothers as well as the entire media industry in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's existing copyright laws are inadequate, amendments are necessary and long overdue. Various changes in the area of copyright protection and enforcement have been implemented in several overseas jurisdictions to tackle online piracy. We suggest that the Bills Committee and Hong Kong government refer to such overseas experience for guidance. Korea is an excellent example. The Korean government, together with the local entertainment industry, successfully implemented measures to address online piracy. It was estimated that the Korean film industry suffered losses of approximately US 1 billion due to online piracy in 2007. The implementation of powerful legislation coupled with educational campaigns and punitive measures against infringers has resulted in the turnaround of the media business in Korea. Comparing to 2013 to 2008, piracy has decreased by 77%. Korea has now one of the healthiest film industries in the world. In closing, Warner Brothers urges the Bills Committee to support the enactment of the bill as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Ha Wei Hei. Thank you. Next is Ms. Wong. Uh, Ms. Jenny Wong. Regional Office in Hong Kong. Online piracy is a huge problem for the entertainment industry, both internationally and locally. When we look at our neighboring countries, such as Australia, Singapore, and as my colleague uh, spoke about, Korea, we've seen them implement advanced copyright protection to, to tackle this problem. But Hong Kong has done nothing for the last 10 years, and our current copyright laws are inadequate to tackle online digital content theft. While the, while the amended bill will not completely solve the problem of online piracy, it is an important first step for Hong Kong to modernize its copyright laws to meet international standards. And we urge the government to pass the bill as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is Ms. Margaret. My name is Margaret Johnson. I'm Senior Counsel, Legal and Business Affairs, and I represent Turner Broadcasting System Asia Pacific, Inc. I thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on the bill. Turner Broadcasting is a media company that creates, acquires and distributes kids, news and general entertainment television programming. Its Asia Pacific regional headquarters are based in Hong Kong. Pay TV channels distributed by Turner in Hong Kong include Cartoon Network, CNN International, Turner Classic Movies and Warner TV. The development of online alternatives for the delivery of programming provides new opportunities and challenges for media companies. Turner sees the delivery of programming using digital platforms as an important avenue of distribution in order to satisfy consumer demand. However, the rampant growth of online piracy is a significant challenge. For television, unauthorized providers stream programming online in real time for free. This leads to a decreased willingness of consumers to pay a fair price for programming. It also means legitimate program distributors face unfair competition from those that provide access to pirated programs but don't invest in that programming. This, the problem of online piracy is made worse in Hong Kong due to gaps in the copyright laws. The introduction of a technology-neutral right for copyright owners to help protect 
and le the electronic communication of programming is vital. Hong Kong is increasingly falling behind other nations, including the United Kingdom, Korea and Singapore, in creating a positive environment for intellectual property in order to protect and support innovation and creativity. We urge and support the enactment of the bill as soon as possible to help move towards modernising Hong Kong's copyright laws. Thank you. Thank you. The next is Ms. Archer. Okay. Ms. Archer. Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today in support of the Copyright Amendment Bill. Uh, my name is Annabelle Archer and I'm the Vice President and Regional Counsel for Cable News International, the operator of CNN. CNN is the world's leading international news provider with significant global reach, both through the distribution of our television channels and through our online presence. CNN's Asia Pacific Regional Bureau has been located in Hong Kong since 1995 and over the last 19 years we've made significant investments in news gathering and content creation, both here and throughout the region. The growth of online piracy, particularly the growth and proliferation of the unauthorised online streaming of television networks, represents a very serious challenge to the media and creative industries and CNN's business. The ready availability of pirated content online has caused serious loss of revenues to CNN and other, other media companies as consumers have become less willing to pay for access to copyright content. For CNN, these declining revenues put increasing pressure on our ability to cover and report big news stories in the way consumers and society demands. There is no time to lose in implementing solutions. We strongly support passage of the Copyright Amendment Bill as soon as possible and in particular, the introduction in Hong Kong of an electronic right of communication for copyright owners that is technology neutral. This is not only necessary to bring Hong Kong into line with its international treaty obligations, but also to help copyright owners and content producers such as CNN fight online piracy and continue their legitimate businesses in Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you. Next, um, Mr Kenny Wong. The Law Society of Hong Kong thinks it has uh, tackled uh, the issues related to parody and uh, criminality uh, related to the last uh, bill. It has also uh, met some uh, public aspirations. However, this time they think that the introduction of UGC exemptions may be an issue. However, secondary creation and UGC, um, whether they are in line with international practice is uh, still controversial. And um, in Canada, they have introduced UGC in 2012, and in October last year, Ireland proposed to include um, UGC in uh, private um, reuse. However, in Canada, it's not equal to fair use. It's only for private use, and it doesn't mean an exemption from infringement. And uh, so far, there is no uh, concern that it should be complete exemption for UGC because uh, this will affect um, a lot of areas, say, for example, the economy. In the UK, they think that uh, while protecting uh, copyright, uh, they, all the different policies should be supported um, by uh, data and uh, figures, and it should take into account the impact on stakeholders and users. So in Hong Kong, whether to whether we should exempt UGC, there should be extensive uh, consultation and discussion. We should not lose any more time to uh, to endorse this copyright amendment bill. It's been eight years. We are lagging behind the international standard. There are views that uh, Hong Kong should be included in the 301 report of the U.S. That is, we have not provided um, an effective uh, protective uh, regime. This will further undermine Hong Kong's competitiveness. And uh, the government and a lot of companies have been endeavoring uh, to build Hong Kong into a creative hub. 
uh, their attempts may be foiled. Uh, we hope that the bill can be introduced, uh, can be endorsed as soon as possible. Next. Ting 国家相比较我们认为它已经滞后 and pass this bill. Before we have further discussions, we think that the bill should be passed as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Yes, Miss Mo. Well, the list is haphazard. Could you please introduce who the lady was? The lady was from China. Is the representative of China International? But there is no one, no such one, no such person here. That's right, because it's just added. Next is Mr. Frank Frank Ritman. With six MPA represented studios and their affiliate companies all produce and distribute filmed entertainment, television, and news programming to global audiences. Some have their Asia Pacific headquarters here in Hong Kong. Collectively, they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars establishing operations here, creating more than a thousand jobs. They've helped <clears throat> make Hong Kong a regional center for media and entertainment, technology and innovation, and commerce. However, Online copyright theft severely affects the creative industries, so we in our studios are gratified that eight years after the release of a consultation paper entitled Copyright Protection in the Digital Environment, the government now stands prepared to enhance protection against online infringement. Since that time, the problems have grown and evolved unabated. Lately, real-time streaming of pirated movies and television programs Sometimes entire channels, by means of devices coupled with infringing applications, have become readily available throughout Hong Kong. Our friends at Customs and Excise tell us they feel constrained under the current ordinance to take action. They feel the law hasn't kept up to date with technology. Three years ago, this legislation became stalled, due in part to unfounded concerns that proposals intended to address rights holders' interests would instead be used to suppress unpopular political speech. However, none of the provisions under consideration could possibly be linked to any adverse impact on Hong Kong's freedom of expression. MPA and its represented studios have a vested commercial interest in the continued protection of creative and political speech. We're satisfied with the outcome of the recent public consultation into criminal liability exemptions for parity, which we deem conclusive and open to further discussion. Our support extends not only to clarifications on criminal liability, but also to the outright rejection of ill-considered proposals for a so-called UGC exception for the reasons so eloquently noted by the administration. Despite the acceptable balance struck there, we've noted in our written comments disappointed that even after all this time, the bill stalls, Phil still falls short in some respects. In view of the short time available, I'll simply refer you to those comments rather than repeat them here. In closing, we urge the Council to act expeditiously to bring Hong Kong's copyright environment into the 21st century. Thank you for the opportunity to have appeared before this committee. Thank you. You're welcome. How I hate. Next is uh, Kosadu Ikeda. Thank you. Last year, we uh, said very clearly that uh, this will kill off uh, secondary creation. And we have six points. This is our bottom line. 
First, that this should be exemption of civil and criminal liability. That is, fair dealing and UGC should be should work in tandem, not one, not either or. And exemption of those uh, four uh, types is unfair. There should be exemption of different secondary creation. Three, the original provision should um, be changed to distribution. Four, but there should be monitoring of uh, copyright charging companies. And uh, there should be a mechanism in place uh, for reports to be easily made against them if they are being unreasonable or charge an unreasonable fee. And there should be an immediate stop put to them so that they cannot uh, char uh, collect fees for non-members. Well, as long as uh, the right, the um, material is not used for economic benefit, then uh, the original creator should be able to use it wherever he or she likes. And if before the court decides that it's an, an infringement, the privis, uh, the um, personal particulars or privacy of the uh, creator should not be obtained through illegal means. Last. A Last year, the official pretend to be uh, to keep an open mind, but no, uh, they don't even hide when they do their dirty work. They have not acceded to our requests. They don't even pretend. They uh, stand on the opposite side of the people. This bill is the complete opposite of what we want, and they say that uh, there will be no exemption of new lyrics to an existing song. They aim to kill um, the vocal line culture and secondary creation. They paint us into a corner. They are the enemies of a free creation. They benefit at our expense. They collude with um, the um, unscrupulous uh, trade traders, so we object to this bill. There are a number of officials attending this meeting. I now ask Mr. Wong to give us a reply. Mr. Wong, David Wong. I'm happy to be here to listen to the views of stakeholders. Well, um, let me briefly go over the uh, background information. We notice that Hong Kong's copyright law, compared to overseas jurisdictions, is lagging behind. Because of the emergence of the internet, we think copyright is an important cornerstone in the protection of the work of creators. This is an arrangement under intellectual property. However, we f understand that. Um, is similar to it, it, it is not absolute. There should be some exemptions under suitable circumstance. There are over 60 provisions providing exemptions in certain circumstances <coughs> so that uh, there can be reasonable use of copyrighted works without the consent of owners. This bill is to catch up with international development. We are trying to bring ourselves in line with international practice and international convention. We give the uh, right to distribute back to the uh, copyright owners so that they have the right to Distribute the the work. 
and there are some um, exemptions. We have added on top of the three an exemption of um, fair dealing. First of all, parody, satire, caricature, and prestige. These are publicly accepted forms of artistic creation, and also, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, comment on current affairs. And thirdly, uh, quotations. So these are fair dealing arrangements are similar to the provisions in the laws of other common law jurisdictions. The UK has uh, enacted a similar uh, exemptions. We hope that our present approach uh, has struck the right balance between the interests of the copyright owners uh, and while at the same time protecting the public's right to use copyright works for reasonable uh, you know, purposes. The bill also has also enhanced the safe harbor system. Under the safe harbor system, we will be able to protect three parties. First of all, the copyright owners, so that if there are any infringed works or <coughs> infringement works, then we can speedily uh, sanction such uh, infringed works to be circulated on, on the internet. And secondly, we can also protect the users. If the users believe that the infringement notice is not reasonable, then they can, <coughs> you know, uh, issue a counter notice. Uh, and the personal data uh, in the notice will not be divulged to the complainant because one need to go through the court proceedings. Third, third protection is the <coughs> internet service provider as a neutral platform. There is no; he doesn't have the added responsibility to protect to to see whether or not there are any infringement going on on in his platform. So long as he follow the provisions of the law, he can continue to operate his platform and develop his business. All these are important uh, proposals in the bill which can uh, enable uh, us to have a he healthy development of our copyright system and uh, to catch up with the uh, latest technological development so that we would all be able to protect the interests of copyright users as well as uh, uh, freedom of the users. Thank you. Before I invite members to speak, I would like to ask Mr. Lao Chi Chung, who has just arrived, uh, to speak. You have two and a half minutes. Thank you. I represent the International Creativity and Science Association. I'm the deputy chairman. Our association uh, is a member of the <coughs> uh, Copyright uh, Owners Alliance. Earlier, we have already put in a submission uh, stating our position. We support the current proposals, uh, amendments to the uh, copyright uh, ordinance. I have come here today in my personal capacity. I am an ISP myself. I operate a small data center. A few days ago, a, a situation arose which uh, uh, would help you understand that the copyright bill is not the Article 23 of the Internet world. The Article 23 of the Internet world already exists, as some member councillors have said before. That is basically there is no need to enact something like the copyright ordinance, uh, uh, but rather a provision uh, to protect the, 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 the right of creation. Uh, today, The ISP has an urgent need for safe harbors. We agree with the ASHACP forum, which recently was uh, convicted for dishonest use of uh, computer, uh, you know, uh, 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 softwares or programs. Our alliance was received an inquiry from the SFOC, asking us to provide some information to assist them with the investigation. Uh, we're very really scared of such scenarios. Without the safe harbors. Uh, we we have doubts about uh, what are our responsibilities and obligations. So uh, the, uh, the safe harbor is very important for ISP, ISPs. If we need uh, a good mechanism, I think the safe harbor is very important for the ISPs. Also, I'd like to explain why we have not, uh, uh, you know, submitted a, a written submission. If I command a certain uh, legislative councillor, for example, I could easily be 
accused of dishonest use of my computer. If I send out a message on Facebook, it's like threatening my own personal safety. Therefore, I have not prepared to type my, up, out my commission uh, in writing, but I'll only you know, make my submission orally. The worst that can happen is that I'll be accused of libel, and I do not represent the views of an ISP. So it is now time for members to ask questions, uh, and shall we say three minutes for each member? Mr. Mok Lai Kwong, Mr. Charles Mok, Chairman. Mr. Fung, I'd like to respond to what Mr. Fung said just now. I fully agree that any dishonest use of uh, the computer is already the Article 23 of the Internet world, uh, but that is not the topic of discussion today. I'd like to respond to Mr. Fung's point about safe harbors. Of course, for the ISPs, it will protect the, it will offer them protection, and I support them. However, the protection is only in respect of copyrights. The example cited by Mr. Fung, for example, the SFC asking him for to provide information or other departments, which uh, <clears throat> ask you for information through the, the, the law about dishonesty of computers, you will not be protected. I think you would know that we are fighting with uh, other, you know, internet providers, uh, to, so that we can come up with some agreement, so that in future they will not, uh, you know, ask for information indiscriminately from the ISPs, because if they do that, it would, you know, affect the safety of the netizens. Anyway, that's not the main main topic of discussion today. Regarding the subject of copyrights, I would like to ask all the deputations and individuals who have come today. Several of you. Um, refer to the UGC. Uh, we all know what UGC means, the user-generated content, that is. Chairman, if you may allow them some time to respond uh, to this. That is, at the moment, the many, the several exemptions proposed by the government. Under what circumstances can you give us some examples, that is, under what circumstances would we be able to help the public understand that UGC can actually protect yourselves, and that the the provisions uh, proposed by the government w does not really give you the exemptions. It doesn't give you the protection, because that can help members understand the, uh, the what what you you are really fighting for. Yes. Madam Kwong, uh, I will cite a few examples as to when UGC can give us the protection while the government's uh, proposed exemptions will not. Uh, for secondary uh, creation, the most common form is to actually, uh, you know, uh, streaming and you know, you know, <coughs> uh, you know. Uh, a new rendition of a song, for example. People, for example, change the lyrics of a song. Uh, 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 someone has uh, changed the lyrics of many songs, commenting on current affairs, and they were struck down. Uh, uh, you probably have heard of streaming. Someone streamed, you know, a film about his playing uh, online games, uh, and he showed it to everybody. That doesn't affect the sale of the game itself. Or the interest of the uh, 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 of the owners of the those uh, contents. However, he would not be eligible to the five the protection under the five exemptions proposed by the government. Mr. Fung, thank you. I'd like to respond to Charles' point. I agree that the dishonest the crime of dishonest use of computer. I uh, represent my peers to say that. Under the existing legal system, the ISPs are, are, are you know, are not feeling too comfortable. Uh, for those who are online fighters, I respect their right to express their views. But however, if we do not have the safe harbors under the copyright bill, uh, we are already operating in a very unsafe environment. I hope that you can give us more better protection so that we can disseminate content. I'm sure Charles will understand this point and support us. Mr. Fung, 
regarding UGC, the question of UGC. It's a very complex issue. Two years ago, uh, we were facing the uh, Article 23 for copyrights uh, works. We had had many discussions, uh, and as a result, we've arrived, reached the, the consensus regarding the fair use uh, uh, exemption. For most of the users, they are actually borrowing the existing copyright to express a certain, certain opinion and views. It doesn't f constitute a new copyright. It's not put to commercial use, and copyright users will treat uh, them leniently. Under the current law, actions could be taken, but the music and recording industry have not done so. What is complicated about the UGC is that uh, on their platform, they sell music or uh, engage in streaming activities, and and you need to obtain a license from the recording industry. But you, but in the case of UGC, they provide the wrong platform so that people can, uh, uh, you know, put whatever they have created or second create creation onto the. Uh, onto the platform, so it's although the UGC platform doesn't need to bear any responsibility, but in fact many problems have arisen. So I think we need to have, as in the case of UK, we need to study the UGC uh, concept as to what adverse impact it will bring to the creative industries. The UGC already has already made licenses. Uh, if they're exemptions, they wouldn't need to apply for licenses, and that would really be problematic. Earlier, uh, in the Remio website, there is a speaker of Hong Kong user. He 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 asked professionals to to uh, sing the song. They use a lot of photos, and but they might have infringed on copyright. Works, but they allow every anyone to download uh, the, the creation. If somebody asks whether or not I, uh, the Customs and Excise Department or the DFG have not done anything, is it the copyright owners are worried about, afraid of made in China, and they've not asked the website to stop sharing such copyright works? Uh, if somebody said that, then all these organizations will be wrongly. Accused because I do not believe believe they have any political agenda. If we have UGC, uh, they will already be they would already be exempted, and we can do away with all those uh, you know uh, difficulties, and we wouldn't be you know. And that's one of the reasons why UGC uh, may help. There, Miss Claudia Mo. I like to ask the ISP uh, Association, Mr. Chang, you stressed. That we must differentiate between personal and commercial users and how they benefit. I think this is rather trivial if we were to do that. And secondly, the uh, mouse fighters, uh, Glacier, right? Uh, well, it would appear now that. Those with vested interests are all in support with the government proceeding to enact this bill, and uh, because we are already lagging behind the global trend uh, in terms of copyright protection. What you said, you talk about many scenarios where there will not be any protection. Was it based on what, like the other gentleman, Mr. Tam said? Is it that you don't trust the government? There are many things in life. Uh, not only do, we, do they have to be legal, they would also need to be reasonable. Is it the case that you don't believe that the government is being reasonable? Mr. Chang, thank you. When I spoke, the few principles I, I, I said actually correspond to UGC. UGC is talking about user-generated content. We're talking about individual users are creating uh, certain works. Generate means derivative works uh, because they would need to correct or amend the works before they would, uh, you know, put it on the on on the, on the internet. 
Uh, I don't quite understand what Mr. Fong meant. Since these, you agree that these people are uh, turning, uh, making digital works out of uh, uh, the copyright works, you said it's somewhere in between infringement and not infringement. I don't understand what you meant by that. And Ms. the case quoted by Ms. Kong were very good. You have netizens who would, you know, amend certain songs and put it on the internet, and their works will not replace the original work. If you are fond of the rendition by a certain singer, just because somebody has, you know, you know, you know, amended that song or rendered in a different version, uh, it doesn't mean they will stop listening to the original uh, performer. Uh, well, you're right because we 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 we, we uh, putting aside the political environment. All the copyright owners they tell us that they they want to tackle piracy, and they say they don't mind derivative works. If that's the case, why don't you? Uh, why don't we have a clear uh, law? Saying, telling the whole world that we allow second creation. Since the copyright owners say they don't mind, they just want to tackle piracy. They please spell it out clearly. Don't let the government, you know, create any grey areas there, Mr. Tam. Thank you for the question. Whether or not we trust the government, I'd like to respond to Mr. Wong Fok Loy. I've encountered Mr. Wong. On many occasions, I think Mr. Wong is a very good of official. is very willing to listen to 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 the public. I hope what I'm saying will not hurt you in any way. Mr. Wong said that our copyright ordinance is already lagging behind Western countries by many years. But I can tell everyone that if our officials understand that our democratic system is behind the Western world by several centuries, then shouldn't we expedite the development of democracy in Hong Kong? The, and then we can, uh, we, and the, the old copyright ordinance can wait. When all electoral members are directly elected, when our CE is returned by civil nomination, only then should we bring up this issue again. That because everyone will have full confidence in this council and our CE. But under the current system, many people in Hong Kong have no trust and no confidence in the government, especially our officials who lie, starting from C.Y. Leung and Carrie Lam, and even our firemen are now beginning to tell lies. So how can we trust this administration? Mr. Si Tat Ming. Chairman, for the film and movie uh, uh, TV industry, we really object to the UGC proposal. The Chinese translation is user-generated content. The gen user-generated uh, content, uh, I think, let's say, take for example, it's about a movie. Uh, 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 they like, you know, uh, 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 you know a certain you know uh, a plot in a movie, and they create their own user-generated content. And if that second creation is it produced and it's circulated on the internet, so does the copyright reside on the person who made the second creation or the original author? So the copyright issue uh, regarding this copyright issue, I like to ask. Council members, uh, what are your your views? That it, if we allow uh, UGC uh, to be exempted on the subject of exemption, uh, uh, the question is that when you assess a certain a particular work as to whether or not it is under caricature or satire, so so it's difficult to to decide whether or not. It really uh, qualifies as a satire and, and therefore should be exempted. So I don't think we should have uh, this method of classification. Mr. Leo, thank you. For all exemptions, they must be 
based on the respect for copyright. Uh, because it, under the common law, uh, an important principle is that we should respect and protect intellectual property rights. The main consideration, as far as this bill is concerned, is that we should, on the one hand, protect intellectual properties and uh, at the same time provide certain uh, special exemptions to satisfy public aspirations and strike a balance between the two. Unfortunately, I have not heard uh, anyone uh, telling us what not. According to the amendment bill, we would be able to uh, strike that balance. Uh, Mr. Ho referred to a, a, sec a song, which is a second creation, Mo Yi Dik Sun Ni. This, under the existing, this, this piece of work is created under the, exist, the framework of the existing ordinance. And this shows that so-called secondary creation has not been uh, stifled under the current legal framework. Because under the current legal system or framework, you can still uh, apply for permission by the copy from the copyright owners to, 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 to engage in this creation. Many people uh, talk about secondary creation. But having the discussion so far, and we've been working on the bill for so long, and the bill's committee has worked on the bill for such a long time, but even now, nobody has provided us with a definition of secondary creation and exactly what it means. Initially, I thought it meant derivative work, as mentioned in the present law. Then. I thought it's not. It seems it's more than that. So now I totally don't understand what the secondary creations mean. I would like to ask the uh, deputations and representatives here, can you give me a definition of secondary creation? Mr. Rakifong, thank you for your question. Secondary creation is an act, a behavior. Now you add something to the original work. Now if it wants to become a copyright work, then it must be licensed. So is it derivative work? Well, as far as we understand, derivative work is like um, a company buys a Japanese song and then rewrite Chinese a lyric for it. It's an economic activity. Or you adapt a novel into a movie. Well, for phonograms, it's also a derivative work. Oh, can I ask you a question? You are talking about adaptation, derivative work. But the question is, is secondary creation the same as derivative work under the existing law? No, not exactly. If it's a derivative work, I, I do not um, like the word works because you need a license if it's regarded as works. We think it's just secondary creations. It's not works because works needs licensing. Mr. So Chung Hung, I think, well, I'm sitting on Mr. Ho's so again, Mr. Ho said, actually, my name is so. As for derivative work, of course, there are different definitions. But if you put it in the law, as pointed out just now, you may uh, use the Canadian uh, UGC. And the most important thing that is uh, is transformed is significantly different from the original work and is creative. So that's why it's called secondary creation. So you just took, you just do not just take other people's work and that's it. Then that would be infringing copyrights. That would be copycat. We do not agree to infringing copyrights as well. And I would like to respond to Mr. Shi Ming. Now, if you watch Stephen Chow's movies, uh, actually, many of them are based on existing works. For example, the uh, Journey to the West. If you talk about about a new work, 
uh, such many of the works are recreation of existing cultures. We cannot work in vacuum. So we can say that all creations are secondary creations. And it's just a transformation, and you just add something new to it. Mr. Lee Ying Lok, as for secondary creation, it's just a concept. As to whether there should be exemption, I think we should uh, do it on a case by case basis. Well, if it's similar to a piece of work, um, how different is it from the original work? That's the uh, transformative element. And back to what I said just now. If you just allow parody, then you have to judge whether it's enough of a parody. Um, has it passed the 50 point mark, or if it's just 49 points, or would it be regarded as parody? This is the problem. Okay, if there are no more questions, Mr. Marfun Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. I Actually, my question is uh, exactly the same as Mr. Liu Chang Kong's. Well, we started to look at this bill two to three years ago. We've been always talking about secondary creations. Just now, I heard uh, the comments from a few representatives, and I'm still um, very confused. I think different people have uh, different concepts of secondary creations. I myself do not accept this term because there is no clear definition. Now we always talk about secondary creations, and just now we've heard different views. Ms. Almeybo mentioned the term secondary creations three or four times, but every time she spoke about it, it meant different things. Now you are fighting for this right, but what is it exactly? What's the definition in the law, and how about in the copyright world, what is it? Is it a work? Then if this it is a work, then you have the right. And you're fighting for this right, but the definition is so ambiguous. Then how can we go on? So I would like to understand more. Have you tried your best to put together a definition for it? There's no secondary creations in other parts of the world. Why must we insist on using it? If you can clear, give it a clear definition, I can accept it. But can you give me one? Well, some ta some said that is academic. Some said it's conceptual. So what exactly is it? Can anyone answer this question? Now, in the law, we need clarity because we are talking about legislation. Just now, members said that there's no clear definition for secondary creations. Now, if we can find a concept or a definition, then in the law, we if we do not use the term secondary creation, is that okay? How about um, UGC exemptions? And there are four points of exceptions. And not going um, to go into details is about um, non-commercial, non-profit making, uh, no substitution, etc. So, are you happy with these um, elements? And I would like, might like to make another point. Yes, copyright is a concept that has been in existence for more than 100 years, but it is not an absolute right. There are things that can outweigh uh, copyright. For example, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. They are more important because they are public interest. Mr. Aulokhin. Well, maybe I can try to explain with this concept. Now, just now we talked about secondary uh, creations. Now, can we look at two extremes? On one extreme, is a, it's an original work. Well, nothing is completely original, as someone said just now. And on the other extreme, you know, it's identical to the original work. Then that would be a copycat. That's not allowed. So, how, where do we draw a line? And how can we find uh, the middle of the road? There are a lot of gray areas in between. 
many people hope that UGC can be accepted. If it's not a complete copycat, but if it does not sub substitute the original market, and if there's no commercial conflict with the original copyright owner, then that should be accepted. You are just Create, recreating something from the original work. So can this be protected? And I would like to add my more, one more point. Now, how about re-singing a song? There are a lot of unclear areas. Well, you say that if it's a political comment, then it's okay. Well, what if I uh, support the police, like uh, Mr. Uh, Tommy Zhang, and then I broadcast it online? I am making a comment. So there are a lot of gray areas. If you want clarification, I think different parties should be protected. And these are also different parties' rights, and this is something we should think more about. Mr. Tom? I would like to respond to Mr. Ma's question. Anyone who doesn't understand secondary creations, the safest way is uh, for members to negative this bill. Well, you shouldn't approve a bill that you do not understand, right? Full stop. Oh, you you can. Well, this gentleman has raised his hand. You speak first. Well, Chairman, I want to answer that question as well. Just now, Mr. Ma asked about the definition of secondary creations. As for secondary creation, it's a Hong Kong name. In English, we would use the word derivative. I think that's closer to what it means. As for derivative, in other countries, our laws. Um, it may not be covered, but it doesn't mean that it does not have a definition. If you look at Stanford University's law professor Lauren Lessig's remarks, after the year of 2000, has, he has written a lot of books on this. He has also made uh, speeches in Hong Kong several years ago. I have some of his books. Maybe I can take up the books and lend them to Mr. Marvin Kwok. Uh, in his books, well, in, actually, in 2001, he had his book, Future of Ideas, 04, Free Culture, 06, Code Version 2.0. In it, he talked about the concepts of derivative. Well, because uh, they um, encouraged creative commons, so these books can also be uh, downloaded from the um, Internet. Mr. Mock and derivative has a definition there. Uh, well, this is not a debate session. I'm just providing information, Chairman. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok, Chairman, I would like to thank Mr. Charles Mock for his explanation. I have been in the creative industry for almost 30 years. As for derivative work, well, I have been using the term. I know what it means. In Chinese, it's hin sang chong zhao, so you don't have to explain to me. But in Hong Kong now we're talking about secondary creation. This is a new term. I do not resist a new term, but you have to tell me what this new term means. So derivative work, what is this relationship with secondary creation? The whole world knows what derivative work is. There are a lot of conventions and contracts and agreements on it. I understand that. Mr. Charles Mock try to explain to me, but he couldn't make it clear what's the relationship between derivative work and secondary creation. So he it didn't help me understand. Mr. Liu Chang Kong, just now Ms. Kuang Chong Ching, right? She said that the well copyright, the rights of copyright is not. Absolute is subject to public interest, freedom of speech, etc. Well, which provision are you referring to in the copyright ordinance? That is, we have to. That is, um, 
public interest and freedom of speech can override、uh, copyright. This is just a basic concept. Freedom of speech and freedom of、um, Uh, communication, freedom of information,、um, they are enshrined in international covenants. Well, the Hong Kong Law Society thinks that UGC is worth studying and discussing. Now we've heard the netizens, and today we are discussing about exceptions. Well, because UGC is not for profit making, it's not for commercial purpose, so should it be exempted? In other countries now, they are studying UGC. They are not stopping、um, short of exception. That is whether UGC、um, can it should it be accepted and can it can it be used for commercial purposes? So we think that、uh, we should study it and we should discuss it. I understand that this will take a long time, and we have to look at the Hong Kong context.、Um, and I hope that improvement can be made to the、um, copyright ordinance. So if、um, No other questions, and we will wrap up this session. I would like to thank the representatives and deputations for attending the meeting. You may leave now. The next session starts at ten past eleven.